Okay, um, hi, I'm going to talk a bit about SDAPs today, um, which is a project that, um, well, basically it is about um, optical mark recognition mostly. You, you may have seen the pieces of paper in the back um, that you had, which is um, a small survey that they're, they're doing here. And they're using a software which is non-free, which is actually used by a lot of universities in, throughout Germany. And what we had, um, why we started actually SDAPs, is that we needed to read out exactly these forms at the university. So SDAPS, which is an acronym, I'm not going to spell it out, but it probably doesn't make much sense. Um, it's really just an optical mark recognition. It's only about recognizing which checkboxes are marked by the user and then figuring that out and getting all the data out from the scans that you have done. However, um, to a large extent, the problem there is to uh, the questionnaire design. You want to design the questionnaire in a way that is easy for the user. You want to quickly create something like this. And you don't want to, I don't know, I've seen tools where you create the questionnaire somewhere else and then you import it, then you mark the regions that need to be recognized. And in my opinion, that's very, not very useful. So what SDAPS does is that um, you create the questionnaire in LaTeX and all the metadata that is, that is required is exported into a file, which is then picked up later on and can be analyzed by the program. Um, in general, it's a Python program with uh, just about 10K lines, so it's relatively small overall. Um, and it's designed in a way that is extensible so that you could create own plugins and commands that build on top of the internal data model that it has. Um, and yeah, mostly it's a command line utility. The only point where the user interface comes into play is for doing manual error correction because that's where you need a user interface. And the rest of it is very much designed to be scriptable. So we just started the project back in 2008 actually when in Karlsruhe at the university, it was still the University of Karlsruhe at the time, today it's the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, um, was, it was decided that the evaluation would go into the be centralized, and we weren't quite happy with the um, bylaws that were in place at the time, so what we decided at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering is that we would boycott the, um, the evaluation at the, at the university. Now, we had an issue because at the same time there was the change to bachelor master system here in Germany going on and we really didn't want to lose the data that was coming in, especially for the lower, um, for, for semester's bachelors, if there were any changes. So we had to uh, actually use the, read, um, do the data analysis our, this is ourselves. What we ended up doing is that we created a tool which read out these forms um, in a pretty quick hack, like over the Christmas holidays, and then um, ended up actually evaluating most of the, let's remove the cell phone, this would help. Um, most of the lectures at the faculty were using our tool in, in actually in cooperation with the faculty itself. So that worked out very, very well, and after that we realized that we could create such a tool but obviously, um, we were using these, the original forms that time, so we needed a way of also creating the form and not only reading it in. And we first decided to use OpenOffice for that, and later LibreOffice, and then even later created the LaTeX support, which is now basically the main part of doing it. So since then, people have tried, oh, sorry, we should have, since, let's do this. First. Um, since then, people have used it for a lot of different things, or even tried to use it for different things. So this is a survey that is being used in the UK by a company called GP Tools, and they offer some services there for um, for doctors who need to for the, do a yearly evaluation of their office for the NHS. And what they offer is a simple, a very simple form. So the doctor gives it to 20 patients or something the day and send it in and they will create a nice report for it. There is even an example report online. They basically take the normal output that SDAPS generates, add some more statistics data themselves, and that's then it, what they are offering. And they're selling the service there. Another thing is examinations. So 
both RVTH Aachen, the physics department there, they are looking into using that, and they have. I'm sorry. Okay, sure. No worries. Uh, all right. That is a good point. That should be it. Okay. Thanks for the. Uh, 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 uh. Um, so yeah, examination is a point uh, which is actually quite interesting. I come to back to that a bit later. Um, so they have designed a completely new way of asking the uh, formulating the questions for the examination. This is an example for the tutorials that they were using, but they have used it and um, for the ex real examination too. And this is an example from Princeton where they have tried to um, get it to work. And you can actually, if you look closely. Uh, you can see um, that STOPS is not really designed to handle these cases. So what they did here is that there's a large box, um, which is just taken out as, a, in, as an image, and then they have placed something else inside to be able to get this, the data out from after the scan and then have a look at the image there. But um, I've seen, I I've, I've think that they have also issues that students write outside the field and stuff like that, which makes it a lot harder to handle the data later on. Um, so yeah, this is different layouts, layout issues that they are having. They, um, the general me there, he did a pretty good job trying to hack up the class in a way, uh, the lattice class, that he could get the layouts to work like this. I'm working on improving this. This is another example from Nation Builder. This is a sheet that was used during the um, 2014 elections in the, U in the US. And that's for the, well, door to door, you go walk to the, from door to door, you ask questions, and then you just check out the answers there. Um, and they sold the service also to some people, uh, to some organizations. I'm not sure, parties, I think, that uh, walked around there. Um, in theory, voting, I have had someone doing this ballot at some point. I'm not sure if they ever used it. I think that the pirates in Berlin have tried to use STOPs for it. A relatively complicated voting system because it's a lot. It's a pain to count manually, but I've not. Um, I don't know whether they are actually using it, other than trying it out once. Uh, just a month ago, I got the request for someone who wanted to do um, autocross, German autoslalom, or something. And there, you need to count the cones that are uh, hit by the cars. Uh, and for that, he wanted a sheet like this. Uh, they are currently using some Excel and then manual things. So I've actually played around trying to do this. And this is using some new code that is not in production yet. Um, so as you can see, there are a lot of different use cases there uh, with STEPs. And you need to think about how, how to make it easier to use for the user. You need to uh, think about the different requirements that you have. In some cases, you want. Let's say you're doing a survey, you want anonymous versus non-anonymous surveys. You might do a patient survey where a patient gets the same questionnaire every month, and then um, it's not anonymous, and you also need to know from which month, month it was later on. Uh, there are some, some technical aspects. You need to think about logistics. If you have a, only one page of piece of paper like this one, it's very simple, but consider an examination, for example, with a huge amount of papers, like, I don't know, four pages, ten pages, then if you staple it, it's hard to scan in again because you need to cut off the edge or something, which might destroy the edge markers that STOPS is using. Um, there's a lot of things to think about at that point so that everything runs smoothly. And this is most, to a large extent, not even a software issue, but an issue of getting um, all the integration on thinking about how to do it. For example, another thing is error handling, especially in examinations. You need to make sure that the students, if they mark some piece of paper, um, that they can correctly uh, correct their results. And then you can go back and you know exactly what happened, and you can correct it manually instead of just running it through the computer. And then you end up with wrong data. And the student will complain that the mark is wrong, or you might not even get complained. And then you're in, in trouble. So. Um, that's not too easy to solve in general. There is lot, there's some consideration that you should uh, take, think about before doing an examination or even a, a survey um, on paper. But at the same time, it's nice to 
uh, paper surveys could make a lot of sense in, in some contexts. So here is um, the thing, is the, some, some parts of it are solved by SDOPs. So what SDOPs does is, uh, for multi-page handling, we have a barcode in the, at the bottom corner, and if you look closely, it says 0002, which is the second page. So on the first page, there's no barcode, but on the second page, there's a barcode saying which page number it is, and there's a large pseudo-random number identifying the survey, which is um, reproducible. So if you use the same Lattice input file, compile it again, it will result in the same number. But if you do some minor modifications, you will get a new number because the software, uh, the, 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 or the areas moved around. So that means that you have a reproducible way of doing it. Then you get a user-defined barcode. So with the example that, I, for example, I, I'm sending a, a survey out to a patient every month or so, you need to know which month the piece of paper was from. So you can just add, add this information to there, or another example might be um, lectures where you have 10 lectures and you want to know which lectures you could print on, on the piece of paper directly to ensure that even if you mix up the papers in any way you want, you know afterwards which lecture it was from. And for non-anonymous servers, you want to be able to mark the uh, paper with a custom barcode that identifies the um, specific user that you handed out to. So that is what um, SDEPS provides internally, while the um, the center one, it's basically not even used by SDEPS itself because it's not useful for it, uh, for it, it's just there for the user to be used later on. Um, in general, the process is that you have to create the questionnaire, you have to then pass it over to the main program, which extracts all the metadata out of it, uh, then you are able to create a printable document afterwards. After some processing, then you hand that out, you scan it back in, then obviously you want to hand it over to the main program again to do the optical macro recognition, maybe manual error correction depending on what you need, what your needs are, and obviously data export afterwards. Um, so these steps are different commands here. So we have setup, we have a stamp command, which does the printable document. We have an add command, which simply adds the scan. We have the recognize command, which does the recognition step. User interface, a CVS export command, and um, cut off because they changed the aspect ratio of the slides, is the um, report command, which, also, which creates a PDF document. So the setup command just simply compiles the Lattice document or takes the um, ODT file, parses it, reads in the PDF file, extracts all the metadata from there, and after it has all the metadata, it can recompile the document with the correct information or overlay um, the, the corner marks and stuff. So that is what happens, and after that, uh, yeah. So considering the, the, the metadata and stuff, what you want is uh, to create a nice uh, looking document, and for that we have the Lattice class. Um, this is just a simple example, and when you compile the Lattice class, uh, the Lattice class, yes, this is the example document actually. So what we can see here is that uh, it's a relatively simple document. What we do is we create begin questionnaire and questionnaire. This is just a wrapping a wrapper environment to be able to repeat it so that we can generate like, I don't know, 100 unique questionnaires with different barcodes from Lattice directly. Um, and then it's a simple section, and a single mark is a just mark question with lower bound, upper bound, as you can see here. Um, then you can add a choice question with different choices, and it's a metric, it's layouted as a table. The four there means that it has four columns, and then we have two choices and another choice for text input. And text boxes are auto scaling. So if you look at the page here, this is the bottom of the page, and you can see the end of the text box because it scales over the whole page. Um, and that's it. And what it comes out is, one, the PDF file, which is, can be printed. But on the other hand, the, all the metadata with the exact position on page of all the checkboxes and the questions that you were using so that we can create a report uh, which contains the question text, which contains the information, and 
also we have the program has all the data required to analyze the uh, the paper. So the next step, sometimes depend if you are doing a non-anonymous survey, is that you still don't have a printable document because you still need to add more barcodes which identify the user, which identify the single piece of paper. So you re-render, uh, you pass that over to STEPS, and then you can create, uh, reproduce, use the stamp command to create the actual printable file. Um, after that, all the processing has to be done, obviously. You have the papers, you add, you scan them. The scan is right now, you need to provide a monochrome TIFF file, multi-page TIFF file, or there are some, I've got some work which um, means that you can import basically any photo. So it actually works, I've tried it, that you use a, hand, a cell phone camera, just take a snapshot with your um, cell phone slash mobile device and pass it over to the import feature which converts it internally to the multi-page diff, does the 3D um, transformation and everything. And then you can, could also use that. But if you're scanning and you don't want to use all this overhead, then you need to have a scanner which outputs a TIFF file, a uh, monochrome TIFF file. And basically the add command just checks that it's a monochrome TIFF file and that the page count is sane and then copies the data over into the project. Um, then the next step is the actual data processing where you run the recognition and it loads the image, it calculates the correction matrix. So what we do here, uh, it, it ex extracts the um, metadata, the barcodes are read, the rotation is done, and optical macro recognition happens. So if you consider an image, this is a photo now, um, you, it's a black and white image otherwise, obviously. But you do, what, what happens is that the corner marks are detected, then you can do the de-skewing of the page because actually it's surprising how bad scanners are and printers. The human eye doesn't see it, but uh, it's not quite accurate. So over, even over the page, there are um, you don't uh, not only get rotation, you get um, and skews and stuff. We also get that the piece of paper didn't quite move in the same speed while you're scanning or printing. So that means that you, that the ex the check boxes are actually not quite at the correct position. So what STOPS does is that there is an extra correlation there to, that analyzes the checkbox area, just looking for the bounding box of the checkbox, or even if it's circular for the circle, um, and then goes uh, back after that to analyze just the center of the checkboxes. Uh, there are a couple of heuristics that I've implemented. It's probably not the best. Um, I'm not a computer science guy. I don't know that much about uh, image data processing. I guess that you could do a lot better. What STAPS does is a simple black level check. So it just counts the number of black pixels in the area, center area. So you can see only the red area is analyzed. The, the white is just some padding to make sure that we don't see the surrounding box. Um, then another thing is that what I've implemented is a half transformation. So um, it tries to detect lines and then removes these lines. And the idea is that if if a user fills in the box, it's supposed to be considered not marked again. So if I remove the lines from the scan, and uh, pretty much nothing is left, then it's probably not filled out completely, which is, or let's say the other way around, if a lot is left, quite a lot is left, then it is filled in. And so just a big pen mark. Um, and another thing is that I try to uh, detect continuous white areas to be able to find uh, whether whether it's filled in just sloppily and you get lots of small white areas. So the coverage is pretty low, but still, it's not really uh, a single mark or something. This kind of works. Um, there, it's it doesn't. It, it's not. It's not great, but it works mostly. So. In my experience, it's fine enough for uh, most use cases in examination. Uh, you probably want to think about how exactly you're doing, uh, because there you can't really accept much errors. And then we have user interface. It's for manual error it's written in GTK, 
and it simply shows the document, the scan, and you can hit the, um, the checkbox to toggle it and to move it around, and that's all there is to it, really. Um, and obviously, we have data export to CSV and the report. Uh, yep. Um, well, the thing is with the report, I don't consider SDOPS to be a statistics tool. However, it's nice to have a, a PDF report for, for quick surveys where you don't really need to be um, to do complex statistical stuff. So there is some support for statistics and there is some support for report generation. But um, I don't see a point in adding much more features to SDOPS with regard to, to statistics because if someone is actually doing more complicated stuff, they probably want to export the data anyways and then process it further using R or whatever is their preferred way of um, doing statistics. Um, but you can, for example, export just a subset of data using filters or just, uh, or, so you can do some statistics, statistics work, some analysis on the data. Um, so there's a filtering support. It's just a neat feature, but also quite hard to explain actually to people. And then we have got some debugging commands, but that's not so much. So I was thinking of, that might be actually quite complicated right now. So if we consider, this is just the example document um, that I have online for the view. So it's just a large PDF uh, document with lots of questions and uh, which shows all the different features you have mark groups, you have mark line, which is just a condensed version of um, marks. You have a choice questions that we already had, that, which is the number of choices, and the resulting document. Uh, what does it do now? It was correct. Oops. Ah, this is the, uh, the, the, the result. So we can do like uh, questions, range questions like this one, you, we can batch them up into different um, so that they're more condensed, ask multiple questions at the same time. The choice questions um, are just multiple choice questions but, uh, with the possibility of having freeform fields which are on the one hand a checkbox because if something is written it's checked. On the other hand you can get the image data later on if you want to. Um, then the same thing for choice questions. So this is basically all that SDAP supports, but it is enough uh, for most use cases. Uh, so it's fine, usually. Um, so this would be the, okay, so this is the example document, and I can now, do we, what? No, okay, I thought it's just, so what I can now do is that I, I'm, run, I'm running this stops from the developer version now, but that doesn't really make much of a difference. So we create the test directory. This is the project directory where stops keeps all the data in. We run the setup tesh command, which means that we want to tesh file as an input command and it will compile them. So what happens now is that um, stops compiles the document a couple of times, then reads the metadata in. It shows the metadata here, which is what which it found. Calculates the um, IDs, the unique IDs that is, are required, and then reruns the whole process again so that the printable document is produced in this case. Actually, I'm not quite sure. I think I've modified it in a way that I don't have the printable document now. Let me see. Mm. Questionnaire test PDF. No, it's printable. It's fine. So uh, what you can see now is that there is no draft. You might have seen before that I, there was a large draft text on the background so that you wouldn't print it by default. So right, right now, because it's an anonymous survey, we don't identify the user. There is no barcode here. Uh, we can sim we could simply print this. Uh, I have an example scan here. Exactly. All right. I need to go back here. Let's go. An example. If you have any questions, feel free to ask at any point. Just if this is an example scan that I have. Okay, right, it's on this screen here. 
or actually mixed in both between both strings. Um, so I'm just going to use that as an example. So here you can see that it doesn't matter if it's on upside down the scan because as the finds the barcode and just simply rotates the page. Rather simple to fix the issue. Um, so if I hand this over to STAPS, it will simply, okay, let's do this. Uh, uh, we want the test project, which is there. Then we want the example.tiff file. And I forgot the add command, obviously. Uh, that's it. And it's very quick because it simply does only, pretty much only copies the file. And now we do the recognize. Uh, this takes a little bit. Uh, now we have the data is analyzed and we can have a look at it. So this is it. I can see it. And if I simply I go make sure that I can see the whole page, I can quickly check whether everything is correct. Wait. Oh yeah, that's good. Here it detected the area that writing is in, and because the border is bold, uh, thick, uh, it means that there is text there. Uh, that's it. And I'm done. You've reached the first page. Okay, I just went backward, but whatever. And so, basically now, all I want that is left is a nice looking report, right? That's pretty boring. And oh, there we go. Uh, we got a little bit of statistics here. Um, pretty simple, but it it does the job. The the um, text, the freeform text fields are simply included as images here, so that you can read them later on. And that is all there is to it, really. And this uses this actually creates a lot of document again in this case. But there are different ways of doing it in, um, in S-Steps. <coughs> so, all right, we could also, let's try that. CSV, export. This is actually pretty ugly right now. Uh, I think it's data. .csv. Yeah, that's it. So, um, it's just a large list of, of ones and zeros, and the one stand, so at the top is the checkbox, it's the question number encoded there. So one one is uh, question, what, um, question one, checkbox one or something. I'm not quite sure. I would have expected it to have more. I know the, the first question is a mark question, so um, it, has, it has the integer in there, uh, which, which of the checkboxes is checked. So one one is the first question if in the first section, and its value is one three four, depending on what was checked there. Okay, that's it. Uh, right. Any questions, or I guess probably not. Okay. So, um, all right. So I was thinking of just, uh, just a little bit about the what the, they did in Aachen. Um, so in the examinations, you have there there are different issues. What they decided on doing is making sure that they don't get they don't have to staple the paper or anything by using a a three folded sheet. So they were limited to four a four pages. Um, they designed the whole thing in a way that this would be possible. And then created some scripts around the whole thing to slice up the images correctly after the scan and combine the four pages into into a printable document and stuff like that. And then we all and they also uh, thought quite a bit about the error handling um, and selection for manual inspection. Uh, so this is what their first design looked like, which was used for a tutorial. I don't have a design of the later ones. Um, and you can see that basically each question is just the checkboxes. They they ask for the formula, they ask for um, the value that is re the result, and then they ask for the um, what is it called? 
unit. So basically, they just thought, uh, put quite a lot of thought into how to um, do the questions, how to change the design of the of the um, examination so that it would work properly. And they have used it at the beginning of this year, and it apparently worked fine for them. Um, the first, then, but error correction. What they first were trying is that um, they would go back. They would. Uh, Sorry. What they first tried to do is that they that if a student corrected something, they were supposed to raise their hand. Then, if they, someone would go in and would circle the point where which, where a correction was made here, and do the cross, and then note it down which piece of paper had to do manually check later on, they changed that around a bit, and then came up with this with a scheme where the students themselves just go ahead and do the correction, but are supposed to note it down. Um, on, a, on the first page, just so that you know uh, that there's something weird there, and then you can explicitly go in. You can filter to just have a look at all the all the ones that where this was filled in the box in the user interface, and then you just simply go through all the pages and look carefully. Uh, but you can skip all of the ones that are fine right from the beginning, so you don't even need to look at those. Um, and only look at those if the student seemed, thinks that there was a mistake done. And apparently they had two errors with the whole process. Two checkboxes that were not identified correctly overall, where students complained. Um, right. But then the other thing which uh, was most apparent um, with the people, in, with the guy in Princeton, they tried to do a very specific layout. And at some point, I decided this is, there's no way of going forward with the current Lattice code. So what I'm working on right now, and I've been working on this off and on for quite a while, is um, a completely rewrite of the Lattice class. And I, uh, because the current code is really designed only for very, very simple um, surveys, and only has pretty few layout options. So you have basically two question types only. Um, there, I don't care about single choice, multiple choice. Which also, which already makes a difference in question design because people do expect that a single choice um, question is a toggle uh, uh, round checkbox and multiple choice is a square checkbox and things like that because that is what people are lear learning from the computers. So you really want to um, mirror these kind of things and it's not designed to do that well. So and there are some other aspects like. Um, you saw this ESV export. I had the one, 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 two, and I didn't know what it was about, right? So what I want is that you can actually change this around later on, and um, you specify in the Lattice file what it's called in the export, so that you can better do that. So the new code, um, I've been experimenting a lot with Lattice 3, which is really nice. To some extent, probably you, most of you won't care about that, because it's all the background machinery. Uh, where it's only relevant, but I've separated out different support packages. I have a base package which implements a lot of um, infrastructure. I'm actually afraid that I've over-engineered it a little bit, but uh, so that you can design the questionnaire properly, you can have sections uh, which are designed slightly differently. You could overwrite some options locally. You could um, also for examinations. Um, if you want a, the standard answers, for um, you might want to check some boxes and then print it out. And you can do things like that. You can overlay data on top of the checkbox. You can uh, create a text box around normal Lattice code. There's a, so I've done a lot of work there. Um, so yeah, this, what the support package does is that I, I added a context management thing. So what you could, for example, do here is you create a context, context begin, context end, and then you enable PDF form creation, and you get in this section, in this inside between, in between those uh, context commands, you get a PDF forms overlay, form elements overlaid, and you can actually use it correctly in Acrobat Reader to mark things. Um, what would still be needed to uh, to be able to post these this data somehow to a server or something I guess um, the variable naming I've I've tried to find a scheme where you hierarchically can name 
variables. So if you have a section, you could give the section a variable name, then un append underscore, and then you have the question and so forth. Um, or you could change the checkbox design uh, a bit. And then you have ways of creating your objects. Q, uh, Q object begin, Q object end, which is the more internal name. And, and then this is a choice question. This is going to be written into the metadata and, uh, um, so that you have the metadata output. And this also means that I separate the metadata output from the actual design, to, uh, uh, which is a problem when you get really special things like, let's say, graphics as a question. So if you, um, I think it was in the, in the examination, they, um, they had a, gra a, a graph, a plot, a diagram as the question, basically, and then different answers. And it doesn't make sense. You can't have a diagram in a metadata in a report. It doesn't make sense to export. So you really want to, uh, to be able to overwrite the, but by default, use the string that the user set, used, but um, also have a way of specifying a normal human readable string instead of a graphics, a PDF, or whatever. Um, and this is the, the, I've called it overrides, where you can actually like pre-mark uh, checkboxes that have a specific variable name. So that, the, um, yeah, you could pre-mark them, or you could um, do standard examination results uh, with, with a feature like that. This is an example document that, I, well, a test document that I used. So this, you can see the blue, the blue ones are, have PDF form elements, can be changed different ways of overlaying data. There's form data here, and this box is simply a rounded box. Uh, and all, all of this basically works. So uh, actually, S-Tops can extract the metadata there, and can work with the data. Um, another feature is that was requested from people, I've talked to a number of people, and those were, I think it was Nando, they suggested it that you, if you create a matrix of questions, you want a more powerful layout options. So what I've tried here, and this is, uh, Henry Menker helped me a lot with this, is um, that you can actually, by simply changing this one flag in the code, change the layout entirely. And by that, you're very flexible with the um, questionnaire design because you can focus on what the questionnaire is about and don't have to focus about on the layout right away at this point. Um, I still have to do a lot of work with this because I'm not quite sure. This is a matrix layout, right? The, the table layout. But I'm thinking of optimizing things a lot so that the tables, if you have two tables above each other, for example, that the columns aren't differently sized. Uh, I'm not quite sure what kind of uh, features I want to support there. Uh, and it's a lot of work to do, unfortunately. But uh, I think it's worth the effort at this point, uh, because you want to. Yeah, I want to. I want to have nice looking um, questionnaires, obviously. Um, yeah, that's basically it for now. Um, I'm, I'm done. So, if you are interested, there's a homepage. There's a website. There is um, a mailing list if you can join or IRC. Um, well, talk to me. Yeah, that's basically it. Thank you. Any questions? Maybe. None? Okay. <laughs> Um, so, uh, hmm? uh, okay, yeah, right, good point. Um, so the question, I'm not sure if I understood it quite correctly. The question is, um, could you import data or? No, it's a complex report. Okay. You 
So the question is whether I could ask uh, uh, STEPS gives me the, a way of um, knowing that how many people answered, if, if a user answered question A with a certain answer, uh, what else did these, um, these people answer there? And this is actually something that is possible with the filters because you can create a report where only the, re only the answers are included that are, uh, uh, which are, uh, so only the sheets are included with it, which are, the questionnaires are included where the answer was done. So let's say, let's, let's, let's try this out actually. It should be simple, right? I hope. Um, what do we want? I want project science tools, and then this direction. Let's do the user interface. So let's say we use question one, question one, and see whether the first checkbox is checked. So we get this report with everything is good there. And um, okay, I'm just zooming right now. And this one won't be included, and probably the other ones neither. <laughs> so I could actually use this. I can use the filter in different programs, right? I could use the filter here. So I could say here, um, one, one equals equals one. Uh, there you go. We only have two pages, and everything else is um, hidden away. And now if, if I create a report with that, I get a new file, which is it's just number three here by default, which just includes one questionnaire. And that's it. It's a very, very simple way. Um, if you want anything more advanced, you'll need to do the statistics yourself, import it somehow. Um, but yeah, it works. Hmm? Thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. Good, thank you.